Hey guys, Blake here with another video and today we did something a little bit different and it's going to be a long term experiment so let's jump straight into the video. So to kick off this video, before I show you what we're going to be looking at, I will show you the process of collecting what I did and we'll see if you can work out for yourself what we've got planned for today. So I'll roll the B-roll now and uh, yeah, just check out some great scenery and the process of what I got up to today. So first of all, uh, today I went out to a few different locations. Uh, I've spoken about it a little bit before, but I'm lucky enough to live by areas of coastland as well as areas of freshwater. So what I did today is I went out and collected this jar here, uh, which contains some samples from a freshwater area. Um, was sure to grab some um, substrate as well as some organic material, leaves and um, sticks and all that. And we're gonna keep it in this jar. Then I went and uh, collected this jar here from a brackish location um, of the Barwon River. But similar sort of thing, I made sure to get some um, vegetative material as well as some of the substrate there, which is basically an organic sandy material. And then last but not least, you can probably guess where this is going. Unfortunately, there wasn't three jars the same size. My OCD is acting up as well. But uh, this one I went and collected from the beach. So this one has salt water in it. And um, I picked up a few bits of seaweed, although there really wasn't that much on the beach at the time. So what I want to do here is just put them nearby a window so they get light and some heat. And we're just going to do enclosed uh, jar areas and see what sort of life springs up in these over time. We'll be able to compare the difference from fresh water to salt water. And um, yeah, I think it'll be really interesting. The good thing is with these sort of sorts of things, they're not always going to be identical. So this, my location might have different sort of microfauna and things like that than other parts of the world. So, so even if you have seen a Jararium video before, hopefully you find this one to be interesting. And I can already see some life in here since these were only collected about an hour ago, something like that. So I'm keen to keep these guys enclosed, you know, even up to a year because I've seen that happen before and maybe even longer depending on the amount of life that sort of thrives in here. So I'm really interesting to see, see this. And uh, this is a project that anyone can really do um, at home. So all I did is went and picked up some of these jars and went and scooped some life out of the uh, local area. So if you do plan on doing this, make sure that it's uh, legal to do so in your area. That's always important. Hey guys, it's been a week now that we've had the ecospheres running. So let's take a bit of a look and see what's happened in there so far. Okay, so this is where I've been keeping them just on this little window ledge here. We've got a bit of activity going in here. I'll give you a nice close look. Uh, before we do, I guess the salt water ones here, we've got a little bit of algae and stuff happening here in the fresh water. And then it's quite clear in the brackish, um, there's you know not a lot of algae or anything, even though those plants haven't really decomposed too much. So that's been interesting to see. I guess the freshwater one's probably the most murky at this point. So in terms of the saltwater tank here, there's not really a lot going on inside. I did notice early on that there was a little brine shrimp looking character that was swimming around in here, but it seems to have not 
uh, seems to not be swimming around anymore. And then I've just noticed all these little pockets of gas in the substrate as well. So, yeah, not a heap of life in the saltwater tank. Um, there you go. Look, I spoke too soon. There's something moving around in there now. You must have uh, must have heard us talking about him. So, yeah, that's what we're looking at, a sort of branch shrimp looking character, I think. <laughs> that's so funny. But that's exactly why I enjoy this. Um, ecosphere so much because it continues to surprise and then moving across to the freshwater one now we've got lots of life happening in here so to get started at the top here we've got some planaria in there I'm sure most of you know what a planaria in the, it looks like but that's that's a brown planaria there we've got some snail leeches at the top like basically right at the top of the water column there that's a snail leech Another planaria there that you can see sort of heading around. So planarians and snail leeches, not exactly things you want to find in your tank. You can see just there we've got a little um, copepod. Seed shrimp are the ones that look a little bit more like a sesame seed. Got a lot of this uh, blue-green algae, which is actually uh, but a bacteria. But... Um, yeah, there's a lot of that brown diatom algae as well on the glass, which is interesting because neither of the other ecospheres have had much algae growth. You can see there's a bit of another look at these critters that are hopping around in here. That's a sea shrimp there, that, that guy in the middle of screen. But absolutely brimming with, with life in here. And I've been fascinated to see that. That has happened so fast in just a week. And then down the bottom there's some that's another plant area there but we've got some little detritus worms and things like that as well the little white worms so yes absolutely fascinating so far and then we'll move across now to the brackish one which has some other interesting developments so this is the brackish one here um, I did expect some of those plants to actually rot back a little bit more than they have but they haven't and this one's interesting that there is life in here but a bit bigger than what we see in the fresh and a bit more alien looking I'm trying to find them but yeah i've been shocked at how clear this um, ecosphere has remained i did expect it to get similar algae and stuff to the fresh water but nonetheless a little copepod darting around in there you can see but there are also some really large more um, isopod looking critters as well which hopefully one will make an appearance so in terms of maintenance, I'm not actually doing anything to these and definitely not water changing, not putting any food in. Um, for the most part, a lot of this sunlight algae will um, feed the tank. And it's essentially just sort of cultivating your uh, infusoria culture, really, but from different environments. That's what we're looking to do here. Okay, so I can see one now there. How weird are these little alien looking creatures that we've got happening in here sorry for the shaky footage it's a bit like the Blair Witch Project going on here at the moment but but yeah another one of those isopod looking fellas there so really interesting to see some larger creatures coming in the brackish setup smaller creatures coming into the freshwater set, setup and very little activity in the saltwater setup but I'm keen to watch this space and uh, see what happens in sort of a month six months and then one year so stay tuned and watch this space so there you go guys hopefully you enjoyed this little uh, project and hopefully you're keen to see the future progress with me um i'm really interested in these and i find myself looking into them quite often so so hopefully we can get an abundance of life as time goes on if you like this video it always helps me out to hit like hit subscribe and all that fun stuff other than that hopefully you have a great day and i'll catch you on the next one thanks for watching